All right, welcome back. And uh, here in stage two, we're going to be composing our scene for the our meta blob and our ZBrush assets to uh, come into. So first things first, we'll uh, drop down our terrain, our uh, a, a uh, procedural terrain, and we'll just move our camera so we can see it from uh, the renderer. And there it is. But uh, we'll double click on it to open up the terrain editor. And this one at the moment is a, uh, a hill. By default, it'll have zeroed edges, so it flattens out towards the edges. What we want to do is just turn that off by unticking this orange highlighted button. And that's going to turn it back into uh, just a continuous terrain, so it stops uh, flattening out those areas. We'll go into the procedural tab on the right, right click on our function and edit it. And I'll just resize this so you can see uh, what uh, everything's going on. And the simple fractal here we're going to change to a terrain fractal. And uh, this is a fractal that came out that's uh, really good for, as the name suggests, uh, making terrains. So uh, when I right click out here, I can right click to refresh, but if I'm in here editing and I change values, it's not going to refresh. So once I right click here, it refreshes. So that's just a handy tip. We're going to just uh, play around with the features, increase the meta scale. Uh, the meta scale is essentially uh, sort of the largest repeating scale. Uh, it's It's a little bit difficult to understand. Um, but once you sort of uh, understand w what it does, you'll be able to uh, tweak your uh, tweak your your settings to uh, get what you want. So essentially, you want uh, if you have a largest feature of say 20, and you have a meta scale of uh, 100, then the, your largest feature will repeat uh, five times in that 100 uh, in in this area. That's that's essentially the um, that's the guts of it, um, and so we we're, we're just going to uh, keep playing around with this. It uh, can take some some time, as I like to c call it. It's uh, artistic uh, exploration. It's sort of uh, more mathematical uh, guess guesswork, really. Uh, but might want a larger feature. So I don't want I don't want it repeating areas like like this it's just too too much in there so increase our largest feature and uh, that's actually pretty good there and once we've once we've got something that we are happy with uh, let's say so we're happy with that's not too bad I'm going to increase the gain a little bit and so in order to add our stratification to make this look more uh, just a little bit more realistic we'll click on this uh, click on the blue line over here and click on the squiggly line which is to add a filter node and we're going to change the filter to a recursive strata filter and that's going to stratify the land formation and create these lines. I'll just increase the resolution so you can see it. You can see these lines across here stratifying uh, everything on the terrain. And so we're going to uh, increase the rock layer hardness, and that'll work uh, to what's what? It's one point. So let's try point six, uh, and that's going to uh, increase the definition between each line, between each layer, and we'll increase the plateau filling to one, uh, and that's going to fill out. For instance, in this area, it starts to fill out these tiny little uh, portions, and uh, down here as well. So, the layer spacing, let's move that up to, uh, let's try two, and yep, that's better. So, it just adds a little bit more uh, fade between the two. If we crank that right down, we've just got nothing, and uh, and at zero, it's way too uh, too steep. Uh, well, that's, that's not quite zero, but uh, let's try it. There you go. So... You can uh, you can play around with the layer spacing uh, to your heart's content, really. But uh, if it's higher, you'll get a nicer, smoother gradient. So I might actually crank this down a little bit to get a bit uh, sharper. 
um, edges. There we go. Alright, next uh, we're going to just add a little bit of uh, uh, uniqueness and another variability in this train which is with the strata positioning and what this will do is actually change if we change the angle here uh, just subtly say minus minus six or minus seven it's going to angle that terrain backwards by seven degrees so if I take this to an extreme like 30 degrees you'll see it you see it there so this is really good for creating uh, shafts of rock coming out and you can uh, zero the edges on that and you can see this uh, really cool uh, rock uh, shear coming through and uh, and you can do a whole lot of uh, other stuff you can change the the angle if you don't if you don't like that angle you can change it and get it coming in from a different angle or change the uh, that angle and you know all sorts of things you can do anyway back to the back to the job at hand so minus six degrees and see how that goes yeah that's pretty good just a subtle slope backwards and uh, this can be really good if you're taking it into uh, another third party software like World Machine or GeoControl and start eroding on it, you'll start noticing those six degrees really coming up because all the water will start flowing in, in, into a certain direction. So, I, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I actually want more of this uh, foreground uh, ocean element here. So, what I because what I want to do is place our apostle our meta blob right about here, and I want more space behind it to uh, place my uh, my camera. So what we can do is uh, we can use the origin of our material of our uh, fractal, and we can reduce or we can move the uh, the origin to uh, to affect our positioning. So if I go from minus twenty. Uh, this will move this entire ter uh, terrain upwards uh, that way. So, sort of uh, keep cranking it. Depends on that. Uh, you can start seeing these uh, extra features down the bottom appearing, and uh, probably minus 80 might might be the the right amount. There we go. So now I've got enough uh, room down here that I can place my uh, my camera and still have room for the rest of it. Okay, so we are done with our terrain. And press OK, and I'm just going to reduce the resolution again um, because we don't need the full resolution because it's a it's a procedural terrain. So what it's actually going to do in uh, in view is you can see this here uh, in this viewport. There is a subdivision uh, occurring on this uh, terrain, and you can see it there very clearly. It's subdivided what's closer to our camera. If I move it closer, you may sometimes see uh, that it even subdivides again. Uh, might have to be even closer than that, but yeah, there you go. You can see these three levels of subdivision as it gets closer to the camera. So it's, it uh, dynamically adds that detail in. So, moving on. Uh, now what we're going to do is resize our terrain to be about the proportions that we want. So for this one, I think uh, 4K by 4k and let's make it 500 meters high now it doesn't really uh, matter what's what size as long as you uh, get the the uh, scale the the right result that you're, you're looking but it is easier to start off with the uh, you know the closest uh, representation of scale that you uh, that you want to work to so I'm just positioning it here so it's cutting through the ground plane and I'll add in our C layer as well and I'm going to hide the rendering of the ground layer uh, by just ticking this little icon next to it and I click it and it hides the, the ground layer because we essentially have our ground layer being created by our procedural uh, terrain. So I'm actually going to delete the ground layer. Um, and I'll see and I'm just going to move these up so you can see uh, see them both. So the C layer by default is uh, very uh, very light so just initially I'm going to go and edit it and I'm going to go into the default water the second tab go to transparency and just crank this up to 
about uh, 50%. It's just so that we can see a little bit of the features under the water, but uh, not have to, you know, not looking at some some uh, light blue uh, effect. Okay, so uh, we want to add in our uh, our second uh, terrain and uh, sorry, our, our meta blob. So we'll position our our camera say around about here. I'm pretty happy with that. And I click down the, the bottom left, there's so on the middle left, we've got our cube that's to load an object. Left click on that, then left click on the open uh, the, the yellow arrow so we can find our, our meta blob. And if you've got them, if you've got the collections, then you can just go and find your, uh, your meta blob in your library. And I'm going to load up the one that I made for the image and position it uh, in my scene. So I've got it in front of me. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that position. Just not happy with the size of my terrain. So actually I'll move it a little bit closer. So let's say about here and it's way too big now. So let's reduce it in size. Move it down a bit. I want this edge to be going into the mountain just just as it does there. There is a, a nice little seam that we're creating. And I'll go back to, uh, that's all right. Let's see how that goes, there we go. So it's uh, intersecting nicely with our terrain.